When you get involved in advanced analytics, I'll kind of say this up front in case I forget to say it later, you're going to be taking the advice of the analysts that you're working with, so the marketing scientists, the data scientists, in terms of what, what approaches are most appropriate. But what, what I want to do here is just give you the sort of ammunition to, to ask the right questions, I guess. Let's kick off uh, with key drivers analysis. What is key driver analysis for? I think with in research generally, when we use advanced analytics, we're really trying to dig under the surface that you would get through kind of cross-tabbing the data, inspecting uh, profiles and so on. Uh, and what advanced analytics allows you to, to do is to look at and to explore relationships. So key drivers analysis is a kind of entry level way of doing that, really. What we're trying to do is to measure the strength of relationship between the thing we're most interested in. So that might be satisfaction, uh, likelihood to purchase. It might be recommendation or, or you know, brand preference. We want to understand the relationship between that key outcome variable and what we call predictors. So the sorts of product features or service features that a client company will seek to deliver. So you can see here, you know, we're looking at trying to understand the impact of a variety of different service uh, attributes in this case. So things like flexible service, speed of problem resolution, and so on, the impact that they have on, on satisfaction. And we'll represent that, and I'll show you a couple of examples in a minute, in, in different ways. So here you can see a graph that's really simply showing in percentage terms how the total impact on satisfaction is distributed amongst these attributes. So these percentages will sum to 100. So this is saying that, you know, 21% 20, of the total impact on satisfaction comes from having a flexible service. So you've got a hierarchy there. You can identify the, um, uh, the most important things quite easily. But why do we need key drivers? Well, I think there are three key areas. One is descriptive. So really, as I've said, to understand what's driving satisfaction, for example, of my brand, my product, my service. There's a diagnostic element. Any client company wants to understand what areas they need to focus on and prioritize in order to improve the customer experience. And finally, there's the predictive element. How am I going to move my satisfaction levels or my uh, likelihood to buy levels? And what happens if I manage to improve the drivers of satisfaction, for example? So what would my satisfaction level be if the levels of trust, speed, comfort, the drivers of satisfaction were increased by 10%. So that's the predictive element. And, and we'll come back to that in a minute. So let me just show you what I mean in action. So this is just a really simple, typical example of where we might use key drivers. So here we've, we've done some work for a public transport provider and the client wants to understand the drivers of satisfaction. We've got about 12 attributes that we want to uh, understand. And actually there is quite a lot of intercorrelation between these uh, attributes. So, so for this project, we used something called Shapley value regression, which takes account of that. But the output is basically a, as I said, a hierarchy and uh, a quantification of the relative importance of each of the attributes. So here here, you can see that information about train times is the most important, and it's three times as important as things like cleanliness of the station. Now, that's really important understanding if the transport provider is, is wanting to know where to put their staff, where to put their investment. And what you can also see is things like actually cleanliness and, and upkeep, so these two blue items, together are almost important as information. So this, this begins to allow us to unpick uh, the dynamics going on of what, what the provider needs to deliver in order to, uh, to keep clients, uh, customers satisfied. Now, we can also use that importance uh, rating alongside other elements and information within the, the questionnaire. So if we look at performance, for example, on each of these items uh, against importance, we can see what we call a quad chart, a quadrant chart. 
And this really just allows us to identify where the company needs to focus its attention. So if we look at this, we've got down here on the bottom right hand corner, we've got elements which have low importance and are performing well. So we don't need to worry too much about these. They're not particularly important and they're doing fine. Top right here, we've got attributes which are important, so they're more important than average, but they're also performing really well. So we just need to consolidate these to make sure we continue delivering the, the right level of service. Over here, this is the kind of the hotspot. So we've got elements which are important and they're not performing very well. So this gives the, um, uh, the client company a clear steer on where they should be focusing. What we can also do is to uh, create simulation tools based on key drivers, which allow our clients to explore the impact of service improvement. So they, they can play around, they can create scenarios. And so we'll typically create these simulators so that for each of the attributes, we can see how important they are, what the current level of performance is. And we can just use simple things like sliders to change the level of importance. So, you know, what would happen if we increase the upkeep and repair of the station by 10 points? The model that sits behind the simulator will simply tell us how much we will increase satisfaction by. And you can do this, you can change the attribute performance across a number of attributes simultaneously. And if you have any kind of idea of, of, of cost of improvement, that can be incorporated into this. So it's just a really simple way of creating an enormous amount of understanding. 